This is the number one vitamin that you need in your body and 42% of you are actually deficient in it. Hey Wellness Warrior, I'm Dr. Nick Sorowski, and this number one vitamin is gonna be vitamin D. Now the good news about vitamin D is that you can actually make it. It's so important that your body knows how to make it. When you combine sunlight and cholesterol, you make vitamin D3. And this is a good thing because vitamin D3 is required by every cell in your body and it plays a critical role in keeping you healthy. Now as I mentioned, the unfortunate part is that 42% of you statistically are deficient in it. But what we have to determine is how much this vitamin D3 do you actually need? If you were to take it, how much is necessary in order to stay healthy and thrive? And this is where the conversation gets interesting because as I was diving through the research, I found that high doses of vitamin D actually are capable of keeping you away from and even curing disease. Let's dive in. Now first, the National Institute of Health and also the Institute of Medicine, they have determined how much vitamin D3 is needed for you to be healthy. And they said six hundred IUs. Now what became very interesting is that the Society for Endocrinology came along and said 600 IUs of vitamin D per day. Well, what does this do? And they said, well, it helps people keep good strong bones. They said, well, wait a minute. What about the physiology of the organ systems and what's needed in order to make the organ systems thrive? This isn't nearly enough. And they said, well, we weren't thinking about that. We were kind of looking at it from the perspective of bone health. Ah, well, now this becomes a problem because now they're saying you need more, but every time you say you need more vitamin D, what happens? Somebody yells, be careful, too much is toxic and it can actually hurt you. Now there's a lot of truth to that. And this is talking about fat soluble vitamins. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin along with vitamin A, vitamin E, and vitamin K. And when you take too much of it, what can happen is you can get a huge build of it in your body. And as a result of that, it can cause you to become toxic. Now the reality is, is that number seems to be very, very high, and most people never even come close to reaching that. So we have to then discuss, well, if you aren't coming close to reaching it, where might you be at? Well, of course, a good blood test will tell us this. How much do we have to have on the blood test? Well, there's adequate and there's optimal. When we look at Western medicine, much of the testing that they do will look at the different values and the different biological markers in your body from the perspective of adequate. Well, if you have at least 30, it's adequate. And when we look at 30, don't get caught up in the numbers here. If you were to go get a blood test, essentially it would give you a readout of vitamin D. Would you be at 10? Would you be at 20? Would you be at 50? Even 100 or more. According to Western medicine, 30 is adequate. But when you look at functional nutrition practitioners like myself, Essentially, we look at it, we say, well, what is optimal? We don't wanna just look at what's the bare minimum you need to just basically survive. We wanna know what your body needs to thrive. And so we don't wanna just focus on the adequate, we wanna focus on the optimal. What becomes even more interesting as we go through, we saw these really low numbers. Well, it's like, well, how much do we need, right? That's the million dollar questions we're discussing here. The Council for Responsible Nutrition basically said, hey, People need at least 10,000 IUs a day in order to actually be healthy. And when we looked at some of the different studies out there and some of the different things that doctors were doing in order to actually get people healthy using vitamin D, they were having individuals take up to 60,000 IUs a day, month after month, year after year which was a extraordinarily high number, but they were monitoring that patient. They were seeing what would happen. Now, the thing is, it's important to understand because you're going, well, Dr. Zorowski, just tell me how much I need to thrive. That's something that's very hard to determine because basically based off inflammation in your body, stress, whether or not you're obese or if you're having gut health issues, this would all hinder your ability to actually absorb vitamin D appropriately. This becomes a little bit complicated here, but we'll get to the answer in just a minute. Back to taking these high doses, what was found is that when you actually have a vitamin D deficiency, it's associated with having every single one of these different diseases. And let's take cancer, for instance. When individuals were given high doses of vitamin D, it was actually shown to suppress cancer cells. It was also found that when women had optimal levels of vitamin D, that they were 65% less likely to get cancer. Let's take a look at brain health. Low levels of vitamin D, for instance, have been shown to be associated with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, and even anxiety and depression. 
And so if you take higher doses of vitamin D, it's been shown to help with all those issues. There's been many doctors who have used high doses of vitamin D as part of the treatment and therapy in order to help reverse autoimmune conditions. Whether it's hypertension, allergies, infections, or even diabetes, high doses of vitamin D have proven to be very helpful. Let's go back to how much do we actually need? Well, this is where the best thing that you can do is actually take a test and get your vitamin D levels and even take vitamin D daily. Now, the problem is in today's society, many of us work indoors. We aren't all outside working. And because of that, we're not getting enough sunlight and our bodies are suffering greatly for this. So this is where actually supplementing with vitamin D becomes very useful. What I'm going to do is I'll put in the description what uh, vitamin D we use clinically that's highly absorbable and also what testing system we use in order to help you determine how much vitamin D you have in your system. But in order to know how much you should take, what you should do is test for it. See what your levels are. And my recommendation, because I don't know how you're absorbing it, I don't know where you're currently at, I can't give you exact ideas as to how much you should take. What we do know is the number is far higher than was recommended previously by many of these different organizations. It's far higher. Now, what you can do though is once you get the number Number back on your test, it's going to give you a readout. Adequate is 30, but what we want to do is we want to get to optimal. Now, some doctors were actually getting patients up to 150 nanograms per milliliter in their blood tests, and they were finding that these individuals were very, very healthy for it. Some doctors were even up into the 200s and finding that their patient wasn't having any negative symptoms. Now, this seems kind of crazy considering if you were to get a test for it, 100 is considered like high level. 200 is considered kind of crazy high. But what I would say is that if you at least have it to 100, and I guarantee that you're not at 100, like I said, most people that I test are anywhere from about 10 to 35 is where I typically see it. So if you do the test, you look and you try to get yourself to 100, and then you can retest after maybe about six months of taking vitamin D, and you can see where you're at. And you can continually work to get you up to this level. This way you don't have to guess, do you take 10,000, do you take 50,000 IUs? Focus on the actual number from your test, take vitamin D accordingly in order to boost it up. Now, if I was to take a blood test today and I was to find that my vitamin D was at like 30, I would probably take somewhere right around 20,000 IUs until I actually got to the point where I was at optimal. Now, like I said, you can test every three months, you can test every six months, you can continually look in order to get your vitamin D up there. But one of the things that's very clear about vitamin D is when you keep yourself at an optimal level and take higher doses, it is correlated with better health. I'm Dr. Nick Zarowski, and if you enjoyed this video, check out this video over here next.